Hey, what's up, everybody? What's up? It's Ross. RWGresearch.com. So today, I'm bringing you the random video. Remember when I used to do random videos? I know some of you have been around that long. Well, this is a random video, but this is actually super, super cool. So there are a few things that I've seen this application be used in that I'm going to show you, but this is one I would have never thought about. So this is a old typewriter, okay? It's a new old typewriter. It's from around 1968 or so. It's a uh, Spellwrite 2 dictionary SD250 made by Smith Corona, I believe is how that's pronounced. Uh, I actually bought this at Goodwill for pretty cheap and I thought, well, if it works, that's cool. The kids can actually learn to type and have fun with it. Or, if it doesn't work, you can return it. So I thought, well, what the heck? So I decided to try it, and yeah, it doesn't work. I did find a problem with the main power supply. Um, I fixed it, and then it broke again. However, um, it doesn't work, and it's probably never going to work, because there was a battery in here that was probably holding some memory in check on these circuit boards. I'm gonna guess, and some of these may be flashed to whatever, and then if you lose power, that's it. So the, this is like for the life of the product. Um, unfortunately, this battery's dead, and I did actually just bypass this and plug it in and see if it would work. Uh, hooked up the right power to the right pins, five volt ground, 12 volt, 36 volt, and uh, this uh, PID. Unfortunately, no go. But what I've discovered along the way is actually a mechanical phenomenon that is really cool. Now, I've seen this phenomenon be used in certain sort of gear reductions where the space is limited and they want a super high gear reduction. They use this method of gear reduction. So, let me get the camera set up and turn this a little bit so you can actually see what we're looking at. Okay, I'm going to do my best to show you what we're looking at. So the knob, the handle, that goes on the end here, you turn this, and it's not moving right now, but it normally moves this roller, which then you feed your paper, and you get it lined up. Stick your paper in there, line it up, and you put it where you want it. Well, there's a fine-tune adjustment right here, and you can see as I move this small knob, it's moving the large knob. Let me see how close I can get. So you can actually see that. See how it's moving the small knob? Now I don't have the set screws in here, otherwise it would be moving the roller and everything. Um, the other cool thing is there is a stepper motor uh, right here which is being used as an indexer or an encoder. It says 40 ohms on it and it's kind of neat because uh, what it is is it's reduced down and then geared into here and they're actually using this as a placeholder of encoder feedback so to speak but let's go back to the knobs because this is an interesting thing so check it out if I had the set screws tight it would be turning the whole thing plus the roller okay but it's not so I'm turning this small one and it's turning the large one See that? So it's a, it's a very high gear reduction right there. And if I turn the whole thing, it turns both of them. And from the inside, I could see this mechanism in here, and I thought, holy cow, you've got to be kidding me. How they're doing that is bloody awesome. Okay? This is the apparatus. These spin free from each other. Okay? And then on the end here, you just have the center part which is mounted to the roller and then you have the indexer part which has is geared down so these two are physically not attached to each other this is where the attachment is made so it's hard to probably see I wonder if I can pop this off so we can see what's happening on the inside okay the proper tools is the best way to do this so if you look here Okay, sorry, I'm out of whack here. Alright, so there's not a whole lot to see there. There's nothing actually in there. There's just a screw that goes into that piece of metal. See it down there? That's that screw right there. So that screw is spinning this rubber piece, which looks like it's mounted to that metal piece. So you're turning the inside. 
So let's take a really close look. Can you see that? That right there is oblong. It's longer here and shorter there. So if I turn this, it's turning the whole piece of plastic in there. This is just a, a piece of plastic with ribs on it. So you can see how I turn that. Now if I turn this, watch what happens. Can you see that? What's happening is that little piece of plastic is moving in and out of that window. What that's actually doing is this is perfectly circular, but since this is not circular, it's walking. Those are actually teeth and it's walking one tooth at a time. One revolution is either one or two teeth. I think it's actually two because there's because of the way it's put together there. So put this back on. See if we can get this back on. And I'll make get you a really good close up of what's actually happening. See how it's rolling? And it's actually just barely moving this. So let's see. Yeah, it's probably about one one revolution. Might be two. I think it is actually two. It's skipping two teeth per full turn because there's two sides. Now, typically what I've seen with this type of apparatus is you'd have just one and it would roll around the outside of the other and would allow you to basically have a gear reduction of one to uh, whatever... Uh, the whole revolution would be however many teeth are in there in this case I'd have to count all those teeth probably divide them by two because it's skipping two because it's two halves if we If we look at the oval, it's an oval with two parts not just one rotating around the other Anyway, that is actually super ingenious. I mean that is cool. I just had to show you that because I've seen this, like I said, used on very specific applications. The other application I saw this used on was a mechanical electrical uh, valve gearbox that didn't have a whole lot of room but needed a tremendous amount of force to turn this really large valve but only turn it a quarter turn and turn it very, very, very like hard with a lot of torque because it's designed to be in a pipe with fluid or something moving or uh, something viscous and heavy that's moving fast so you need it to have a lot of torque and this is how you do that so basically the electric motor would be turning the outside and then your valve would be on on there and you could spin this really easy and you could have a lot of torque on the output so like if I hold this Oh yeah, see it's actually rotating that now because I'm holding it steady. So what if I hold them both? I literally can't stop that from moving. It's moving that. So the gear reduction is is this many teeth divided by two. Or however you want to say that. It's probably got that backwards, but you know what I'm saying. Freaking cool. I just wanted to show you that because I thought it was really really awesome And now what I'm gonna do is put this thing back together and go give this back to Goodwill and get my store credit Because quite frankly, I can't fix it because I think these chips hold memory that are flashed and This guy's supposed to hold that data in there because when I boot it on it goes beep 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 Makes some stupid noises and the light flashes and it's trying to boot but it can't because there's nothing to read from in the memory <laughs> Sad but it is what it is. I'm not concerned about it. I just really had to show you that. That is just awesome. If you've seen this gear reduction style used in other things, let me know. But that is a place I would have never, ever in my life looked for that. Such a cool, such a cool way. Anyway, there's your random video for the week. God bless you guys. Have a good day. And uh, peace out. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.